I'm doing something new just this month since I'm joined by my cohort in crime, Chris. Hello, hello, hello! My other half on the Bard and Chris vlog that has a few episodes out now, especially one you guys might enjoy, the Dark Tower quiz podcast we just put up. It gets a little blue. We shed it at one in the morning. Th there is a new side of Chris that people normally don't see and normally don't want to see. So please, go see! So anyways, how we're going to do this is we'll be talking analysis during the recap -y bit. So yeah, massive spoilers are massive book, comic, possible movie spoilers. That's because Urwa is a honk mafa. I'm pretty sure she couldn't call Idris Elba a honk mafa in the movie. Honk! <laughs> <laughs> so if you're listening on Patreon, you heard all that. If you aren't, you should totally become a patron, just $2 a month, really, so that you can get me and him unedited. So yeah, massive spoilers are massive this month. And literally, he just went on a minute and a half rant. Well, we did. Yeah. About about Detta Walker and the word honk. Honk. So, let's get into this issue. Roland is still in the grapefruit, talking to himself when he spies a Billy Bumbler impaled on the thing. Aww. Aww. Billy Bumbler, who has a name. Paul? Yes. <laughs> And in the distance, he sees a man in a brown leather duster, with a Stetson pulled down over his eyes. He thinks it's Martin, but it's not. What it is, is actually a shade of who he will become. The raven form of Martin flies down and basically does some more mocking, taunting, riddle d talk, before Roland draws his revolver, ready to blast the bird out of... Existence. <laughs> but the gun vanishes. Birdman Martin then grows to a huge crow, grabs Roland by the face, and flies off. Raven. But he only has two eyes. Everyone knows ravens have three eyes. In the real world, Elaine and Cuthbert are talking about their dire situation, so they do decide that it is time to try pulling Roland's brain out of the grapefruit. Soul. So how are they going to try pulling his soul out of the grapefruit? Well, remember, Elaine does have the touch. Bam! He has the power! <laughs> so Elaine's just going to go in there, be all... Slap Roland's ass and say, stop, not that off, get back in your body. Nah, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so, goes into his head and see what's going on. But as they do, Cuthbert witnesses them vanish. This is where they enter Todash space. Yes. Because then they talk about the Manny and... Well, they gl they graze over it. You're right. It is like two sentences of just, I saw these dudes in blue robes once. It was weird. And just a quick rundown, the thing about the Manny and Todash space... Todash Space is something done by a tribe called the Manny who wander the deserts of Midworld, who then proceed to eat mushrooms, hear bells, and then transport between dimensions. They don't really move between dimensions, they slide between the background that holds the dimensions together. Also, fun fact, a lot of people, including, I think it is in It, that um, the Deadlights has to do with Todash Space. Yeah, because they always hear the bells. Yeah. Yeah, anything where things start going a little awkward and you can't really tell what's going on in a Stephen King book and you hear bells, that means the Manny are visiting you. <laughs> but the thing about Todash Space is, now, normally with Todash Space, you can't really do anything in the other world that you're visiting. You right. can only visit. You're kind of in ethereal form. You watch like it's a play being put out before you as it's described. So what Elaine does is he goes a little bit further than that. Something that these people dedicate their lives to figuring out figuring out how to do this 14 year old boy does without the help of the magical mushrooms yes they eat magical mushrooms so they vanish into Todash space but while cuthbert waits for about an hour a long time with actually a mildly funny if in a dry way you know he gets to have an actual scene where cuthbert shows that when people go ha 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 he's the jokester it's not just a line they told in his bio yeah. it's not something they just added onto his resume he yeah. actually is you know because literally it's like, yeah, so I'm going to come home, you know, be like, the rest of, where's the two thirds of your content that you should be with? Oh, you know, one of them went to a, you know, one of them got sucked into a giant pink ball. The other one went to go find him and just vanished into thin air. All because Roland found his true love and burned at the stake what we saw through the glass ball. However, while he's waiting and talking to himself, suddenly he hears these sickening chomps and horses dying well here's the horse scream because <laughs> it wasn't a sh it wasn't a clean kill <laughs> and so he looks there's a mutie wolf chomping on the horse which actually leads to another one of my favorite lines <laughs> is so okay our sons are gone but, but how are their horses but their horses are okay yeah, yeah but, but the horses <laughs> <laughs> so he does blast it in the face with a gun yay and then he's alone 
Now they have no horses, though. They have one horse. They left with three horses. One for each boy. Cuthbert shoved his off the bridge. The mutie horse just ate one. Oh, the mutie horse ate or one? Or the mutie wolf just ate one. Okay, you're right. They're left with one horse. Hilariously, it's Roland's horse. That's because Roland's <laughs> the main character. He gets to keep his horse. No, he doesn't. Shut up. We don't know that. <laughs> Read the gunslinger. Shut up. No one knows about the gunslinger. I knows about the gunslinger. Then go on. There are other podcasts than these. <laughs> This isn't a podcast. No, it's definitely not. Now they have one horse. Eventually, Elaine does pop back up, but he's looking bloody, you know, because he did kind of just fight a giant raven. Well, he didn't really fight it so much as he just kind of flew next to it and then got zapped by laser eyes. Which, by the way, art art wise, (laughs) there's the best. I love the panel because Roland is just their Buzz Lightyearing. It's it's interesting artwork. But anyways, Elaine pops back up from Toad Ash, holding the grapefruit. He's not letting it go. So Bert, being like, dude, give me the orb. Dude, you need to let that down now. Give me the orb. He tries to touch it. But can you touch it? No, 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 you cannot touch it. Well, the thing of it is, the whole- Oh, by the way, that would be another Matthew McConaughey joke. Thank you, Magic Mike. The thing of it is, is it's showing a foil for Bert when he does that, though. True. Because it's Bert who was, you know, no, I can cross this river. No, I can get these horses across. I won't give up. I'm not going to back down. Who literally just turns to him and goes, all right, man, you've done enough. Call it. Just, you're done. Which is the argument that ensues because Elaine brings that up to him and hits him in the pride. And then Bert's like, fine, you know what? Fuck you. Go. Go. I don't care. So when he goes to touch Elaine, he gets fired back into the campfire where his right arm just kind of immolates. However, he is a smart boy. He stops, drops, and rolls. Then when he's done rolling, he gets up and looks over, and Roland's about to be eaten by a wolf. Yes, he is. Not of the collar, though. So an actual wolf, not a robot. Made by North Central Box Comics. Guthbert can't find his gun, so how's he save? How's he gonna save Roland? Well, he doesn't. Well, to be fair, he was just pretty much mind blasted. I was bitch slapped through a house. No, he was bitch slapped into a campfire. <laughs> Unexpectedly. I mean, you're not going to hold on to your gun at that point. Well, then he forgot the face of his father, didn't he? How does Cuthbert save Roland from the Mutie Wolf? He doesn't. Roland breaks the vines they have tying him down to make sure he doesn't go running off again. And just literally full on just snaps the wolf's neck all action hero style. And then he kind of passes out again. Well, yeah, because the thing of it is, and it's stated in the comic, that whatever force has him in the trapped in the grapefruit doesn't want him dead well i think they say that it's martin no they say the grapefruit whatever has him in the grapefruit doesn't want him dead oh so that makes me wonder what would have happened if elaine hadn't caught him eyeballs don't fly it's not a beholder it's an eyeball so anyways something has too strong of a hold over roland's mind soul body and everything but cuthbert is more worried about the literal wolves at the door and the figurative wolves at the door. Actually, too. I love... So Elaine turns around and goes, you know, Oh man, I don't know what we're gonna do. There's wolves at our door. Cuthbert goes, uh, literally or figuratively? Well, figuratively, of course. Why? As as Elaine's turning, and then we see... A giant pack of mutant, were- of mutant wolves. I almost said werewolves. Just kind of surrounding their camp. <laughs> there. They're wolves. <laughs> Th- those wolves. Those literal wolves standing right there. So I think this is another solid issue. What do you think? I do too. I think the inside the grapefruit bits are very drawn out. Yeah. Like, I mean, even the start of this is a pa- pretty much a page of him just going, is this real life? Or is, is this, this just fantasy? fantasy? Caught in a grapefruit. No escape from Martin. How about no escape from insanity? Well, he's not really insane. He may not be sick, but mm-hmm. he's not well. So other, I, I think this is a solid issue. Like I said last episode, I like how Elaine and Cuthbert are getting fleshed out. Like, Elaine is, you know, they're finally playing with this touch. That <laughs> sounded wrong, but you know what I mean. All right, the thing of it is, I would have loved it if this was two separate series. For- I would have liked to see it, The Long Road Home, Cuthbert uh- and Elaine, or The Long Road Home, Roland's Journey. Take this one and then just break it into two separate books. This way we have... Mu- yeah, no, actually, I like that idea. Especially since, like, Roland's grapefruit thing, there's a lot of fluff. It is, like... It's not just that. There is so much of a tonal shift between Cuthbert and Elaine and Roland and Martin and Roland and Oi. And Roland. <laughs> and Elaine. And then some other people who we're going to talk to later on, but we're not, we don't know about yet. Pretty much, you could boil down the inside the grapefruit stuff to 
a two two issue you know two parter external kind of like how they did Shimi's Tale or the Sorcerer later on. Yeah, I mean, like, two to three issues, because we do still have another two issues to go through. Oh, true. And there are very important things that show up. Of course you know what I mean. You're the one who actually proposed it, and then I'm agreeing with you. So yeah. you know what I mean. I know what you mean. You do know what I mean. Now then, come back tomorrow, all you people listening at home. And you too, Criff. Well, maybe, maybe not tomorrow, but, you know, a couple of days, you can come down, we'll record some more. and anyways, Get our Idi Amin on. Anyways, come back tomorrow as the Muty Wolves and Out of the Kala really attack, and we actually get, like, the first major action scene. 